All right, let's do one last example. I definitely wanted to do one where they had a greatest common factor that you could pull out. So notice how initially these numbers are quite large. You got 28, 58, and a negative 30. Furthermore, they all have an x squared in common. So before we even start some of the uh, AC method, let's go ahead and pull out that common term first. So let's see, what do they have in common? Well, everything is divisible by 2, and they all have an x squared. So let's take out a 2x squared. Let's see if this makes things a little bit smaller. So this would be f uh, 14x squared minus 58 divided by 2, 29x, and this one divided by 2, minus 15. Okay, now it looks like they don't have anything else in common, but we need to continue factoring it. So from here, I'm going to take its A and C term, and I'm going to multiply those together. Now, these ones are quite large, but we can do it. 14 times A negative 15, that would give me a negative 210, quite large. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me a negative 210, but they add to be a negative 29. Let's draw our box and really start hunting down some possibilities. Okay, so I have negative 210. Must add to be a negative 29. All right, we want to make this uh, easy on ourselves, or at least as easy as possible. So I'm writing down possibilities that will multiply to be 210. So 1, 2, 10, 2, 105, 3, and 70, uh, 5, and 42, 6, and 35, 7, and 30, 10, and 21, 14, and 15. Okay, now that I have a list of a bunch of different numbers, they need to multiply to give us a negative 210. That means one of these numbers will be negative, and one of them will be positive. They will add to be a negative 29, so I know the larger number must be a negative. It's the only way we'll get a negative 29 when adding. Okay, comb over the list very carefully. The one that will do it will be this pair right here, the 6 and the 35. Sure enough, those multiply to give us the negative 210, and they add to give us the negative 29. Sometimes you might have to go through really checking these one by one, uh, but, you know, it's definitely a worthy process. All right, so we have that. I'm going to write down the 14x squared, the minus 15. And let's take our middle term and split it out. So plus 6x minus 35 x. All right, now we can continue with our factor by grouping. Grabbing these first two and looking at what they have in common. So I see that uh, we can take out a 2x. That would leave us with a uh, 7x plus 3. Okay, not bad. Looking at the next two numbers. Uh, these ones, we can pull out a negative 5. That would leave us with a 7x and a plus 3. Okay, looking pretty good. Now I can grab my two binomials and almost be done. So they have a 7x plus 3 in common. And then there would be a 2x minus 5 left over. Now be careful, this one isn't done. Remember that initial uh, factor we took out at the very beginning? It's still out front of this entire process. So feel free to write it down now in front of all of this. That way you do not forget it. Now we have the final factored form of our polynomial. 
So using the guess and check method and the AC method can be two great ways to factor your uh, polynomials. I suggest using the uh, reverse FOIL method if the numbers aren't that big or your leading coefficient is 1. If it starts to get a little bit more complicated, then feel free to use this AC method to really break it down. Thank you for watching educator.com.